go over their heads. They said, oh, because it was not for them. They thought they, they succeeded in the meeting. They flopped. Say, I'm a success forevermore. Man, there's an adjustment for me in this program, in this meeting. For others, they came, God saw them, God rejected them. For another, King David, oil was poured. Say, there's a, there's a change in my life. And I'm a success forevermore. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Amen and amen. Amen! Oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name forever, oh Lord, my God. How excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name. Praise God forever. Say, my Father, my Maker. My Father, my Maker. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy me. upon me. Before the end of this service. Before the end of this service. Renew the spirit of my mind. Renew the spirits of my mind. In the mighty name. In the mighty name, name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Renew the spirit of my mind. My Father, oh my Maker, have mercy upon me. Re Batala mangoro dokovo shaprate. Renew the spirit of my mind. Renew the spirit of my mind. Blessed be your holy name. Le prasoto randele boro dokosakatas. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, the power, the praise. All the majesty and the dominion. Lord, unto you are we gathered, revealing mysteries to us. May our hearts indict a good matter. Thank you for the exhortations, the prayer sessions. Glorify your holy name. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Champions, shout fire! Fire! Shout ururu! Shout muzozo! Muzozo! Shout mafuta! Mafuta! Amen and amen. amen. I want to thank the Holy Spirit for the privilege to be here. Amen and amen. 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 Yes. amen. And also want to thank our Father, Papa Joshua Aguila. Woo! Say we love you, Papa. We love you, Papa. Yeah. All right. We've been discussing the subject um, Alpha and Omega. Praise God. Hallelujah. Revelations chapter 1, verses 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Now, this angel introduced himself to John. In Revelations chapter 1, verses 8, it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And the ending, yes, sir. said the Lord. The Lord there is ascribed to him because he is a spirit. Yes, sir. And he is a Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is a Holy Spirit. Because angels are spirits and they are holy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Jesus said, whosoever denies me before men, I will deny him before my father and his holy angels. And angels are spirits, and yeah. they are holy. So angels are what? Holy, holy spirits. Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, yes, sir. and this is also a holy spirit. Yes, sir. He's an angel, and he's holy. Yes, sir. Now, we told you there are two words we want to carefully examine because there are people who are of the position or of the opinion and, and they hold on to it strongly that this angel here is not an angel but rather it is Jesus and we said it is not Jesus because they read where he said he was pierced we saw that here yeah. in our last class amen yeah. please answer us now. Yeah. Yeah. He referred to himself as someone who was what? Pierced, yes. yes. right? Yes. Yes. Please answer us. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. But now, today we want to take time to look at the second word. And we, uh, by the way, we told you what the word pierced means. What do you think it means? We told you already. In our last class, what did we say the word pierced meant? Oh, you forgotten? Wonderful. Yes. When one falsely prophesies. So what does pierce mean? What happens to the person? The person is pierced. What is pierced? To starve. Oh, man. Are you sure I'm in the right class now? Are you sure we should still teach you? To be starved. Oh man. You forgot. These are not things you should forget. But there's something we want to show you concerning the second word, which is. Him saying in verses 17 into verses 18, he says, John reported, he said, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last, I am he that liveth and was dead and I'm alive forevermore yes, sir. and I have the keys of death of hell and death now yes, this is the part we really want to carefully look at today because this is where people strongly presuppose that this is Jesus yes, there's no other way they say because Jesus was the one who died Yes. And then rose again. Yes, sir. Now, one of the things people, um, such preachers who hold on to that position, don't understand, is that even Jesus Himself did not die. Yes, sir. You know, when we when we tell people Jesus did not die, mm -hmm. it sounds very very crazy. Yeah, okay. Well, it is actually not me that is crazy. It is even Jesus that is more crazy. Because he said in Matthew chapter 12, verses 40, that just as Jonah was in the belly of the fish, three days and three nights, so also must the Son of Man. He actually said must, must be in the grave. He said it's a must. It's a must. And he, he, he equates what happens to Jonah to what would happen to him. Yes, sir. He said, remember the story of Jonah, what yeah. happened to him? Yes, sir. So the question is, for us to know that Jesus did not die, let's look at what happened to Jonah. Yes, now, please, look up. Yes, 
Have people not died before? Even before Jesus came, have people not died before? Please answer that. Have anointed men and women, mighty prophets of God, not died before? Right? Right? And have people never been raised from the dead before Jesus came? People have been raised from the dead before Jesus came. Right? Yes, sir. And Jesus never likened himself to any of such people it's true. It's true. when it comes to dying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, even Elisha, we are told, died. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, yes, sir. Elisha died. Yes, sir. Not Elijah, now, but Elisha yes, died. Yes, and his body decayed. Yes. Because the Bible says a man was thrown into Elisha's grave. Yes, but they didn't know it was his grave. Yes, and the Bible says the man's body came in contact with Elisha's bones. Yes. Which means his body decayed. Yes. Yes, Amen. Yes, now nah, listen, you've been coming to these classes. Yes, Your body by now should have been conditioned. I don't know the kind of body you have. But if still, sleep is still embarrassing you like this, then that means you are a slow learner. It means that you, ha you have a weak body. Your body is very weak. And the people Jesus said that to, that their spirit is willing but their body is weak, were the ones who finally denied him when Christ is came. Don't be a Christian with a weak body. We meet every time like this in the night. I, I wonder how you would have made it if you had joined a secret society. Thank God you did it. They would have used you for rituals. As a matter of fact, even the things you see in the building, you can't even sleep. When you come to the house of God, and you just do what you like. You don't know where you are. Don't have a weak body. You look big. You look good. People admire you. Yet, we can tell you this one's body is weak. Do you know why Sarah couldn't have children for a long while? Because her body was weak. She had to receive strength to conceive. What kind of body do you have? Don't be that kind of person. Now, Jesus said, Jesus. did not liken himself to, to the death of Elisha because he died. Yes. Neither did Jesus even liken himself with the death of King David, his father. Yes. He didn't. He didn't liken himself with the death of King David, his father. Yes, sir, true. But he said, look. Whatever people would define as my death will be exactly like what happened to Jonah. Mm -hmm. And that is why over and over again we've taken time to explain to you that the people who threw Jonah overboard mm -hmm. thought that Jonah was dead. Yeah. Yeah. But Jonah wrote by himself, yeah. I actually did not die. A fish swallowed me. In other words, a fish rescued me. Yes. I went down to the bottom of the sea, over 30,000 feet below sea level. Yes, sir. But I actually did not die. Yes, sir. God sustained me for three days yes, sir. and three nights. And I came out very alive. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So, maybe spiritually in death, a fish swallowed Jesus to hinder him from dying. Mm. Because what that fish did for Jonah yes, sir. was to prevent Jonah from dying. Because yes, the guy would have died. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, 
But God prepared the fish to prevent him. Now, would you also call that a rescue? Yes. To rescue him from death. Yes, and the thing is that Jonah knew that he was not going to die. Yes, he knew. Yes, he said, I'm the reason why this problem is happening. Yes. Yes, Throw me overboard. Everything will be fine. Mm. So he did them a favor, knowing that God will always rescue him. Mm. Because the message God gave him, only he, Jonah, must deliver it. So he knows he can't do it in debt. Yes. So Jesus has a message too. And so Jesus knows. I can't die without delivering the message. And what was the message? That all authority has been given unto him. No angel could say it for him. He had to come and say it himself. Maybe not for you, but for me. He did. Now, let's say something. Jesus has seen men die. Yes, that he, Jesus, rose from the dead yes, by commanding them to come out from death. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes, sir. Question, who commanded Jesus' resurrection? No one did. Right? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Now, who kept Joseph in Jonah alive? God. Oh, yes. How? Yes. With, yes. By preparing a fish. Yes. Right? Yes. So, Jesus' resurrection, who, whose idea was it? God. God. The same God who prepared the fish for Jonah is the same God who did everything he did for Jesus. Yes, but just because you did not experience what Jesus experienced, you presume that he died. Meanwhile, he already told us what happened to Jonah is what must happen to me. As Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days, so must I be in the grave three days. If somebody says, I will be in the grave three days, does that suggest that he died? No, no he's telling you where he will be for three days. Jesus did not die. Jesus didn't. He had a message. Okay. Now. And, and you know, First of all, you need to understand that we hear people talk about, and people have said it to my face sometimes, and I laugh over it. They, 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 they try to say to me that I'm relegating Jesus to nothing. And, and I'm always wondering, the Jesus you say you are glorifying. Have you seen him before? I've seen him three times. He came looking for me to talk to me. And he has never queried any message that I preach. Someone said, I'm not sure you saw the real Jesus. Then, how do you know the fake one? You see, the thing here is that there are certain truths some Christians will not consciously and deliberately accept because it offends certain quarters, certain religious quarters. But the truth of the matter is that Jesus himself did not die. Yes, sir. He only said he would be in the grave. Yes, sir. Whatever looked like death to men was not death to Jesus. Yes. Because Jesus did not die. To the people who threw Jonah overboard, it looked like death to Jonah yes, sir. in their eyes. right? Yes, sir. To them, that was Jonah's death. 
But to Jonah, he wrote, I did not die. The people did not see what happened inside the water. They thought I drowned. A fish swallowed me up and kept me for three days and three nights below sea level. Think about that. Below sea level. Full-fledged human being. A prophet of God at that. And Jesus. And Jesus liked it. Jesus really admired what happened to Jonah. He said, what happened to Jonah is what will happen to me. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now. I'd like to read one scripture to you. Go to, go to, before we start looking at this, let's read something to you. Go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Now look at verses 25. Can we read? Verily, verily, I say unto you. Now, wait, before you read, who is talking here? Jesus himself. He's marked in red. He says, verily, verily. What is verily, verily? Certainly, certainly, I say unto you, the hour comes, and that hour has even come. What happens? When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And what happened? He said they will bounce back to life. Question. Who did that for Jesus when he died in court? No one. But Jesus knew he had entered an hour where he could command the dead. And the dead, the word dead there is the word for corpses. Now, but you need to be careful how it is used. Because here he is referring to corpses with reference to the dead. But there are different synonyms to it. But this time around, he is literally talking about people who died literally. And he says they will hear his voice and bounce back to life. Now, there's a place where this same Greek word was used for dead, but it meant something else completely. And that is why, you see, through the teaching of the word of God, people always say, well, why do you try to use, interpret Greek, Hebrew? Because English language does not honestly communicate everything that was really, really said. Here in this context, Jesus was saying, I have entered a season. When he says, our death, he said, God has just pushed me into a season where I'll start commanding dead people to rise. So, so he didn't just start raising the dead because he is Jesus. No, it was a season he entered. That means he grew in the anointing with which he was anointed with. At first, he started by what? Turning water into wine, according to John. In John chapter 2, that was his first miracle. Right? Then the next miracle, he started casting out devils. Amen. Amen. Uh, then the next thing, fever. The Bible says fever. Yes, sir. He casted out the fever. Yes, sir. Fe feverish conditions. Then headaches. Then the next thing, um, he will speak prophetically. Fishes will gather. Yes. Yes, People's net will catch fishes. Yes, sir. All those things started happening. Yes. You see, it was a period. He was growing. You know, yes. people think that because Jesus is the son of God, he... Everything just came to him. No, he grew just like the way we are all growing. 
But if you are thinking, Jesus was kind of special because his mother was a virgin. He did not change the colors of his boxers. He suffered like every other person whose mother was not a virgin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When he was hungry, he was very hungry. Yes. Okay, he was born of a virgin. Others whose mothers were not virgins killed him. Yes. Wow. But we can't really say their mothers were not virgins because we don't know how they, how they married their mothers. But you know what we mean? Yes. That Jesus was born of a virgin. Yes, but those other ones, their fathers inseminated their mothers to have them. Yes. But the point here is that to... to and you know, we, we thank God for what the Roman Catholics have done in honoring Jesus. But there is a mistake they made. Because there's a way, there's a way the Roman Catholics honor Jesus to the point that it looked like from the word go, from childhood, Jesus was exclusively extra special. Yes. Yes. Therefore, we are not surprised yes. to see what happened to him happen. Yes. No, that's not true. Because even Jesus with his own mouth testified that John the Baptist was the greatest of all, born yes. of women. Yes. And his mother Mary is a woman. Yes. And Jesus testified, yes, John the Baptist is the guy who was extra special. Yes. A guy who was filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. Jesus received the Holy Spirit when he was 30. You have received the Holy Spirit now at 17. Some of you have received the Holy Spirit at 16. Some of you have received the Holy Spirit in your 20s. Jesus received the Holy Spirit for the first time in his life at 30. Who is more special between you and Jesus? You that received the Holy Spirit at 17. And Jesus that received the Holy Spirit at 30. Who is more special? When did the Spirit of the Lord rest upon King David? At 17. Okay. At 17, yes, sir. True. the spirit of the Lord rested on King David. Yes, sir. And King David killed Goliath at 17 yes, sir. with the aid of the Holy Spirit in his life. Yes, sir. And the anointing yes. from the prophet, right? Yes, sir. And the Bible says the spirit upon King Saul rested upon King David from yes. that day forward yes, and never departed. So what King David received at 17... Jesus received it at 30. So you can't say Jesus was extra special. Yes. Rather, even Jesus would admire King David. Yes. That you received the Holy Spirit at 17. Honestly. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Listen. Listen to us. You see, when we tell you, we will not always be together. Even those of you who are close to me, we are telling you, we will not always be together. Listen, we're telling you, we will not always be together. A time will come, you will be telling you, but also used to talk to us like this. We will not always be together. I'm telling you the truth. And you're letting sleep mess you up. We will not always be together. I'm telling you this thing. If you think, oh, don't worry, brothers, we will follow you. You are, you are just, that's your own, that's you doing your own thing. I'm telling you, we'll not always be together. Okay. So why don't you get what you can get now? So you see, they were wrong. To ascribe extra specialty to Jesus on the grounds that he is Jesus, born of a virgin. John the Baptist received the Holy Spirit from the womb. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And who gave the Holy Spirit to John the Baptist from the womb? Jesus' mother. Through her salutation. Yes. The Holy Spirit she herself did not release upon her own son. Yes. Her own son had to go to meet the one, his mother, released the Holy Spirit upon. 30 years after. 30 years after. And Jesus from 30, within the space of three years, the whole world to this day is talking about what he did. Do you know that all the miracles Jesus did, wait, Jesus' ministry was for how many years? 
Please answer us now. Three years, Three years right? Yes, but can we tell you something? All the miracles Jesus did was only for 27 days. Oh, in three years, it was only for 27 days. Only for 27 days. Can't the miracles even, because it was each miracle per day. All the miracles Jesus did was only for 27 days. In three years. 27 days in the miraculous. After that, he started teaching, 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 teaching. He did the teaching more. But the miracles only was for 27 days. So if you think Jesus was always working miracles, no, no, no. In, a, in three years of his ministry, the miracles Jesus did was only for 27 days. That's why we said, you now, you have even a, a privileged opportunity than yes, Jesus. Sir. Now, like we said, the Roman Catholic is there. That's where the. It's good to honor Jesus. He deserves it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But even Jesus will not agree if you tell him that the reason why he was able to do what he was doing was because he was the special son of God. Even Jesus will tell you, if that is the case, then why did I need to, to receive the Holy Spirit from John the Baptist? Yes, sir. Why did I need to receive the Holy Spirit? Yes, sir. You know, Jesus, because of who you are. Jesus will say, I was like every human being like you are. Who yes, told you I was extra special? <laughs> but the Spirit of the Lord made me special. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what I allowed him to do with my life. John the Baptist had the same opportunity for 30 years. Yes, sir. Elijah had the opportunity too with the spirit of the Lord. Yes, sir. Elijah had the same opportunity. Other mighty prophets of God had opportunities, peculiar opportunities. Please. Yes, yes, Let, let's postpone to this class. Yes, uh, maybe this class is not for you. No, no, let's no, no, no. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you know, Jesus, throughout his ministry, yes, not one cherubim showed up. Not one. Yes, but for Ezekiel, yes. he was seeing cherubims yes. with his eyes wide open yes. without prayers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So who was even more privileged? Do you know who the cherubims are? Exactly. These are the venerable angels surrounding the very throne of God. And now they all honor Jesus. But as at the time Jesus was walking the face of the earth, before he, he, he obtained that honor, yes, and the inheritance God gave him, no cherubim showed up, but they showed up for Ezekiel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That will tell you how exalted yes, Ezekiel was yes, by God himself. Yes, Not even a seraphim showed up for Jesus, but they showed up for Isaiah. Do you understand? So if you are trying to say Jesus was extra, extra special because of who he was, you are crazy. Jesus will tell you, I had the same opportunity you are now giving. You should even exceed what I've done. Didn't even Jesus say, greater works shall you do? Someone said, oh Jesus, it's only you that can do it. Jesus said, but you are crazy, man. Do you know Jesus didn't have an opportunity to be a Christian? Jesus is not a Christian. Christianity even began after his resurrection. Yes, sir. You are a Christian. Yes, sir. Do you know how privileged you are to come to church where there's no smoke? Uh, Jesus, they attend a synagogue, smoke is smelling everywhere. They are burning offerings, doing all those things, burning incense. Yes, to come to a church where you can be comfortable and you sit and you hear the word of God. Yes. Even Jesus admires you. Someone says, it's Jesus, it's just you. <laughs> now you be cool. You say, well, what's wrong with this one? <laughs> All right, now, Revelation chapter 1. <clears throat> oh, 
Revelation chapter 1. Please just give us a few minutes so that we can show you what we want to show you. Now, the angel said in Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 to 18, the B part of verse 17, he said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Now, I want you to mark the word dead and then the word death. Now, there's a reason why you have those words. You have dead and then you have death. And like we said, this is where some Bible preach ministers, Christian ministers, hold a strong opinion that this was Jesus to prove that Jesus died. And we, we've taken time to explain to you, Jesus did not die. Yes, because Jesus likened his experience, which you and I call death in conventional Christianity, to be the experience Jonah had. Yes. Yes. As far as Jesus was concerned, Jesus never, never one day acknowledged that he died. Jesus never said it with his mouth. If you study the Bible, you will never, never see where he said with his mouth, he died. He did acknowledge, greater love had no man than this, than a man should lay down his life for his friend. Right? Yes, sir. Lay down. Yes, sir. Right? He even said, they will kill me. And I possibly that got angry. What kind of rubbish talk is that? But even when it looked like Jesus was killed and he was buried, when he rose, Jesus himself never, never acknowledged that he died. Never did. Never did. And when he rose from the dead in Matthew chapter 16 verses, in Mark chapter 16 verses 14, he was angry with the disciples. The Bible says he reprimanded them for their unbelief. He scolded them. He scolded them. And what did he scold them with? He said, didn't I tell you that these things will happen and I will come back? Yes, didn't I tell you? Yes, he was disappointed in them. Yes, it's there, Mark 16 verses 14. Yes, he reprimanded them for their own belief, yes, right? Yes, sir. Amen now. Yes, sir. I mean, the guy is telling you, look, nothing can kill me. I can't die. Yes, this thing, yes, it has entered me. Yes, I mean, for Jesus to be telling people that he's the resurrection and life. He said, I'm life and I'm resurrection. How can you kill life? How can you kill life? So when they say Jesus died, Jesus said, man, I never died. I'm life. I'm resurrection. And guess what? Where did he get that revelation from? from John the Baptist. The message John the Baptist preached yes. was what Jesus continued. Yes. John the Baptist came preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus picked it up in Matthew chapter 4 mm -hmm. and began to preach, repent, yes. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and began to teach. The kingdom of heaven is like this. It's like this. It's like this. It's like a seed you plant in the ground. Yes, sir. It grows up. Does that mean that? No. no. He said, this is how the kingdom will pray. This is it. This is it. This is it. He said, I'm resurrection. I'm life. Yes, sir. I'm resurrection. I'm life. I'm resurrection. But the people thought that they killed him. Jesus said, I'm life. You can't kill life. So to say Jesus died is a misnomer. But you find a preacher crying. He said, because of what they did to Jesus. You're crying about what they did to Jesus. How about the other prophets? Do you know what they did to them? Do you know? I've heard a preacher. I, and I used to believe that for many years. I used to believe that what happened to Jesus was something that has never happened to any human being. That's not true. In fact, worse things happen to people yes. than what happened to Jesus. They were worse. Do you know what it means for somebody... 
to be tied mm. to two horses. Mm. And the horses were told to run apart. Yes, this horse will run to the right. Yes, this one will run to the left. And the person will split into two. Yes, Do you understand? Yes, Did that happen to Jesus? No. But those things happened yes. to prophets, to people. So when a preacher is coming to say, what happened to Jesus has never happened to mankind, you are mad. You are crazy. You are crazy. Do you know what happened to people? Was Jesus beheaded? No. Eh? no. Or his whole body was still intact? It's just holes that they put in his hands, right? Paul was beheaded. The other side, John the Baptist was, he was beheaded. Yes. And then you come to see that what happened to Jesus is more in terms of suffering. You are crazy. Even Jesus will not even accept that. Jesus will tell you, look, stop it. You see, there's, there's this false, false honor people have created for Jesus. And Jesus said, be honest with yourself. You read this thing in the Bible. There were people who suffered. <laughs> there were people who were massacred. They mean they were, they were torn apart. Hebrews chapter 11. Didn't you read? He said some people were sown asunder. Sown asunder. Some burnt alive, exactly. Was Jesus even thrown into the lions then? No. Oh. So when you come to say, ah, if you know the terrible things that happened to Jesus, it has never happened to mankind, you lie. You lie. You lie. Because even Jesus will not even accept that. Jesus will not even accept that. He will never accept that. But now, look at what I want to show you. You see the word debt. Right? Did you see the word debt there? Then you now see the word dead. Dead. Now, which one did, did, did this angel acknowledge happen to him? Dead or dead? Dead. 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 dead? Please answer now. Dead. Which one? Dead. Read that verses 18 again. What did he say? Stop. You see that? He said, I'm he who was. Read that. Revelation chapter 1, verses 18, right? Read that first line again. One to go. I am he that liveth and was dead. Again. I am he that liveth and was dead. Now, he said he was dead. But he didn't say dead. There's a difference between both. There's a difference between both. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Let's see what, how he introduced himself to the Smyrna church. Yes. Revelation chapter 2. See, what is, see how he introduced himself to the Smyrna church. Read verses 8. Oh, man. I, I'm excited to share this with you. That's why I know I will never lack. I will never lack. I will never lack. I will, I will never, never lack. lack. I will never lack. No. Look at verses 8. Read verses 8. See how he introduced himself to the Smyrna church. Want to go? And unto the angel of the church is my right. The east is said the first and the last. Which was dead and the alive. He repeated it again. Yes. He said, I was dead and I'm alive. I was dead. Now, notice. He didn't say dead. Yes. He said dead. Yes. Now, in English language, you may want to mistake, you may want to say one is a past participle of the other. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Oh, Collins died. There was death in Collins' family. Yes. Yes. Who died? Collins. Collins. So you see the way they use the word? Yes. Death and dead. 
Do you understand? Yes, sir. That's not how it, that's not what he's referring to here in this. Because the English language here, the way it is narrated, it will suggest that. Yeah. <clears throat> Let, let's read the last thing he said towards the end, what he said to this minor church. What he said will happen to, to them. Um, read verses 10. One to go. Now, now notice, he said, Be thou faithful unto what? Death. Be faithful unto what? Death. Okay. So he told them, Be faithful to death. Yes. But I was dead. Yes. He, do you understand? Yes. But now I'm alive forevermore. Yes. Now, you see the way English language is communicating. Mm -hmm. Now, when we tell people this is not Jesus talking, but because of the way the English language communicates it, you want to suggest, you want to think that, oh, this is Jesus. No, this is not Jesus. So, let, let's begin to explain to you what was being communicated in the Greek. Mark the word dead. Mark the word debt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. You find, like in Revelation chapter 2, you find that in verses 8 and in verses yes. 10, right? Yes. But if you go to Revelation chapter 1 and verses 18, you will see both in one verse. Yes, sir. Dead and debt. So I think you should go there so that you can put, mark those two words. Yes, sir. Now, if you look at the word dead, the word dead, dead. dead. <clears throat> when the angel said, I am first and last, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. Now, the, the word, the Greek word for dead, please listen carefully. Yes, sir. The Greek word for dead, D-E-A-D, is the word necros. Necros. N e k r o s. Necros. 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 Now, now look up, please. That's the same word used in John chapter five, verses twenty-five, where Jesus said, "The dead." shall hear my voice. Shall hear the voice of the Son of God and come back to life. Yes. Now, notice, the dead does not answer to the Son of Man. And Jesus was careful with his tenses. There was a time he would say, the Son of Man. He would refer to himself as the Son of Man. But when it comes to relating with the dead, commanding them to come, he says, Son of God. So, the dead can only answer to the voice of the Son of God, not the Son of Man. So you need to know how Jesus used tenses. And, and one of the things about a spiritually matured Christian is the use of words. You need to pay attention. That's why sometimes after the service, when we ask some of you, how was the lesson? What was it? And when you say, you said this, you said that, sometimes I begin to say, that's not what I said. This is what I said. Yes. Because you were just presuming that what I said meant what you presumed it to be. No, no, no. And, and sometimes we try to explain. You, you did not pay attention to what I was saying. Please give us your attention. So, necros means what? Dead. Yes. Dead. Yes. Dead. Yes. Corpses. What is a corpse? C O R P eh? S E S. Eh? Cops. 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 What, what, what does that mean? A dead body. Eh? 
Please answer now. Yes, right? Now, when Jesus used that word, please, b before you write, listen to what we want to explain to you. So that you don't go and say what we didn't say. When Jesus used that word in John chapter 5, verses 25, that the time, the hour cometh, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and come alive. You see, when Jesus used that word, dead, it is the word necros, which means corpses. Right? Yes. Someone who is dead, right? Yes. Lifeless, right? Yes. Okay. But we told you earlier that we'll be showing you in the book of Revelation, which we have now, where this angel used that same word, but he does not mean what Jesus was referring to. Even though it is still the same Greek word, necros, which means corpses. Because now, I, I, when I saw that, I was fascinated. And I said, Lord, how can this be? Okay. Then the Lord gave me two instances. He said, um, in Revelation chapter 1, verses 10, John said, I was in the island of Patmos. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard a voice before me, behind me. It was the sound of many waters. Remember? Yes, sir. And the voice said, I'm Alpha and Omega and all that and all that. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Then he says, I turned to see the voice. Yes, sir. Please answer, right? Yes, sir. That yes, sir. speak to me, right? Yes, sir. And when he did, what happened to him? He said, I fear as a dead man. Please answer. Now, is that not what he said? I fell as dead. That word, necros. It's still the same word, necros. But the question is, did he really die? Didn't the angel touch him and say, rise up? Please answer. Eh? So you see now, it is still the same word, necros. But in the context in which John used it to describe what happened to him, it doesn't mean that he physically died. It just meant that he froze. For instance, in Matthew chapter 28, when you read from verses 4, when Jesus was, when the tomb was closed, right? There were soldiers that Pontius Pilate had appointed yes. to guard yes. the tomb. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Then the Bible says there was an earthquake yes, sir. and an angel came yes, sir. with the speed of lightning yes, sir. and kicked the stone, yes, sir. rolled the stone away, right? Yes, sir. And the soldiers themselves, the Bible says they said when they saw what the angel did, they fell like dead men. Yes, sir. The word necros again. Yes, sir. Wow. Does that mean they died? No. No. What does that suggest? They froze. Yes. Right? Yes, sir. But it's still the same word necros, yes, which means what? Corpses. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. But when Jesus in John chapter 5, verses 25 says, The hour comes when the dead shall hear the son, the voice of the Son of God and come back to life. What do you think he was actually talking about? Those that were literally dead, yes. lifeless, yes. physically dead. Yes. Right? Yes. And he proved it but why? by raising them from the dead. Yes. A widow lost her son. They were taking him on a bier to go and bury him. Yes. Yes, and Jesus intercepted the burial procession, yes, hit the bier, and the guy woke up from the yes, dead. Yes, Amen. All right? Yes, uh, Jairus' daughter, he said, yes. Tabitha, right? Yes, sir. Talitha Kumi. All 
rise up. Young damsel, rise. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So, it's still the same word, necros, yes, dead. Yes, right? Yes, sir. But now, you begin to look at, how can an angel now use that word, a mighty angel like Alpha and Omega, now use the word necros for himself? Isn't that amazing? But why will a mighty, gracious, excellent, divine angel use the word necros for himself? That I was dead. How can an angel be a corpse? Why will he use that word necros for himself? Oh, I was thinking about it. Then the Lord said, no, you don't need to even worry about that. The answer is there. Mm -hmm. I said, what was the answer? He said, didn't you see? He said, I, I live it forevermore. I'm alive forevermore. Mm -hmm. So I said, wait, wait, wait. What, what, what does that mean? Let me show you something. He said, I'm he. Right? Revelation chapter 1, verses 18. I am he that liveth. Read. I am he that what? I am living. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And the gift of hell is. He says what? And I have the keys of death. And I'm alive forevermore. Okay. Now, spell this word, Z-E-O, Z-E-O, then accent over the O, Zao, but you pronounce like a D sound. Dao, Zao, Dao. But here, Zao, Z E O, ascent over the O. Yeah. Now, when when Jesus said, "I am come," he said, "The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy." John chapter ten, verses ten. But I am come. That they might have life. Right? Yes, that word life there is the word Zoe. Yes, sir. Zoe. Yes, Z O E. Yes. But this time around, you have the word Zao. Z A O. Zao is different from what? Zoe. So so that you, you don't miss miss them. Okay. Now. The best way to explain Zao is to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to read something in verses 14. But I think before we read, it, before we read verses 14, um, here he was talking about the priesthood. One time he talked about not muzzling the ox that treaded the corn in verses 9. But here he was explaining something about the priesthood. Now, I, I, I'd like you to read from verses 13. One to go. Now, what he's trying to say is that, you know, there are some people say, all the offerings, all the tithes we pay, pastor is using it. For himself. That's what he's talking about. He said even pastor is supposed to feed from what you bring to church. Right? Yes, sir. So he's saying the priest in the Old Testament, they had to live on the offerings people brought to the church, to the synagogues, two of us. That's what he's saying now. Now, see how he compared that to himself. Read from verses 13 to verses 14. One to go.
You see that? He said, those of us who preach the gospel, just like the way the priests, the ministers in the temple had to live on the offerings, he said, even so too, those of us who preach the gospel should live by, the ben by, by, by what the gospel provides. Now, you see the word live there. Please answer now. The word live there is the word zao. Right? Now, what, what do you think zao means now? It means livelihood. When you say, this is where I make my living, yes. what does that suggest? That's what provides for you. That's Zao. Not Zoe. Zao. This, is, this job is what puts bread on our table. What's that? Zao. So what do you think the angel was saying? When he was saying, I was dead, but now I'm alive. What he's trying to explain there, oh man, we thought you already got it, sir. You didn't even get it. What he's trying to explain, it's not your fault, let's explain it to you. What he's trying to explain is that, don't forget, he's the angel to the seven churches. Yes. There were certain things the churches were experiencing. Yes. There were some of them who were in lack. Yes. There were some of them who were going through difficulties. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. In fact, for instance, the Tatara church had to be relying on that Jezebel. Yes. Right? Yes, and we took time to explain on the chambers of commerce in Tatara at the time. Yes. Because yes, of die. Yes. Die. Purple die. Purple yes. die and all that. And so because of that, for the church to be to be inducted into the Chamber of Commerce in Taitara, they needed to allow people like that. People to bring, uh, people with those Jezebel nature. Yes. Yes, like Jezebel. Because of our ecclesiastical and political influence. That means there are people like that, there are ministers like that. They know the governor, they know the mayor. They can give you business opportunities. But on one condition, I must be coming to preach in your church every month. You know, once every month. You know, some people do those things. They bargain and all that. So here, and so this, angel, and then, of course, to the Smyrna church, we saw how they were in deep poverty. And the Lord is even telling them to prepare themselves unto death. That means he wasn't even coming to rescue them and all that. So here, when he was saying, I was dead, but I am Zao. I'm alive forevermore. Yeah. He's trying to let the churches know. <clears throat> I know I did not provide for you guys. Uh -oh. But now, I'll be your source of livelihood. Yeah. That's what he was trying to communicate to John. When he says, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. Yeah. That means that there was a time when it looked like God was dead. God was not there for you and all that. Actually, I'm the one that is supposed to provide for you. But there was, I kept back for a while. He said, but now I'll be your source of livelihood. It's like what God said to Abraham. I am El Shaddai. I'll provide for you. So now, this... This angel, this Alpha and Omega, he says, I'll be your source of livelihood. I've been given that responsibility by God and Jesus to be the instrument where you'll be eternally provided for, Amen. cared for. You see why to the Philadelphia church, he said, I can open doors for you that no man can shut. And I will close doors that no man can open because you have little strength. 
I will do this for you. I will do that. I will do this. I will provide. I will yes. do this. I will reward you yes. and all that. See, I will become your source of yes. supply. Yes. Your source of supply. Where even though you work, you will not see that job as your source of livelihood yes. anymore. Yes. That's also the reason why we need this lesson. Yes. You know, somebody once said, ask us some years back. But I said, well, what other thing do you do for a living? I said, no, I only just preach. Mm. And the person said. And I said, at that time, we were running $20,000 every month. And the person said, how do you do it? And, brothers, in case you don't know, I've taken time to observe people who give offerings. If you are to go by these offerings, brothers, I don't know how you guys make it. But what they don't know is Alpha and Omega. Yes, sir. He has, he has announced to the churches, even though many don't have the ears to hear it, yes, that he will be the source of livelihood. Amen. So I don't need to worry about anything. Amen. So whether the people give offerings or not, but Alpha and Omega has become a Zao source of livelihood. So he ensures I'm well provided for. Well, maybe not for you, but for me. He ensures I'm well cared for. Were provided for. So, asking God, Father, provide for me. You are wrong. Provisions. All, everything you ever need is in the hands of our family. Yes. And he's saying, I'll be your source of livelihood. Amen. There was a time in your life for a while, it looked like God was dead. People were asking, where is God? Where is your God? I know that. He said, now nah, I've decided to be your source of livelihood. So when Jesus actually said to Apostle Peter, throw your net on the right side, you will have a great cash. Alpha and Omega ensured the fishes came. When Jesus said, go and catch the first fish, Open his mouth, you see money to pay tax for both of us. Yes. Alpha and Omega ensured yes. that the fish swallowed money. Yes. No wonder that Jesus, without a secular job, could take care of 12 men who had families. Yes. And they were sending money back home to take care of their families for three years. And Jesus said to them, When I sent you, did you lack anything? They said, no, sir. He said, but now I'll be leaving. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Then in the process of time, after the spirit of divine favor rested on the apostles with divine utterance, the churches began to grow. These Alpha and Omega started staring in the hearts of the people. To sell their properties. Yes. They will come lay the proceeds. At their, at their apostles feet. Yes. And the Bible says none. Lacked. None. The same thing that happened between. With Jesus and his disciples. Is now happening with apostle Peter. And 8,000. Yes. With Jesus. It was just Jesus. And 12 men. Yes. Then at the most 5,000. Yes. But apostle Peter. Yes. Exceeded Jesus with additional 3,000. 8,000. And there was no lack. Ah, 8,000. And one man, wife and two children, he's somersaulting. Where, where is the next money going to? Where, where, where is the next meal going to come from? How are we going to get cash to pay the bill? Ah, let them release this unemployment benefits. Let, let them sign this $600. Hey, no, Alpha and Omega said, don't worry. Yes, sir. He said, I'm alive. I will be your source of supply. Yes, 
But maybe not for you. I, I can see. I, you know, some of you, the way you are responding is like, but also, you can say your own no. I thank God for what God is doing in your life. But for me, there are many Christians today. If they even suspend them at work, it's like their whole world is crumbling. When they said everybody stay at home, don't go to work. Hi, some people say, how are we going to do it? Hey, we are done for high blood pressure increase. And who were these people? Majority of them, Christians. That's why I found Omega kept saying to each of the churches, if you have ears to hear, hear what the spirit, I'm a spirit, hear what I'm telling you. He kept saying it to each of the churches. So I don't have to worry. Where is the money going to come from to pay the rent? He says, I will be your source of supply. He said there was a time it looked like I was not there. He acknowledged it twice. I was dead. There was a time I was quiet. I was like a corpse. It was like God was dead in your life. He said, now, it's time to supply you. Maybe not for you. And this angel is not relying on any economy. Kai, you didn't get it. Only Pastor Weber is getting, getting what we're saying. The, this angel is not saying, ah, let me look for a Christian president no. that I can talk to his son. Say, don't worry. I'll be your source. I will supply you everything. You so he ensures that there's always food in my house. That's why I will never suffer again in my life. Listen, I hope you know when we say this is, I'm not doing positive talk. Yes, sir. I'm telling you what we know. Yes, sir. It is being confident of this very thing. Yes, sir. And it's a good work that he has begun. Yes, sir. That he will always supply. Yes, and he's faithful to complete it. Faithful to complete it. Faithful. There's no unfinished work with him. No wonder Paul says, in every state I find myself, I have learned to be content. Whether I have or I don't. He said, but my God, huh? my angel, the almighty, Alpha and Omega, he shall supply your needs. <laughs> he shall supply according to his riches. No wonder he said to the Lutheran church, you think you are rich, you are wretched. You have not really seen... You, you are relying on where you think your source of livelihood comes from. Don't worry, that water broke will dry off. But not me. Not me! Not me! So he's acknowledging. Of a truth, there was a season in your life where it looked like God was dead. Although he sent me, but I head back for a while. Let me see. So I was like a corpse that froze. Mm -hmm. wow. I was seeing everything, but I, it was like I was not seeing anything. He said, John, let me tell you. I'm your Zao. Amen. I'll start supplying. Amen. Everything. Amen. Everything. Amen. Everything. Amen. So go to bed and be free from hypertension. Amen. Where would the money come from to pay my car note? Where would the money come from to pay, pay my school fees? See, don't worry about that. He said, I'll be your source of livelihood. He said, after all, where you are serving me, you should feed from it. That's what he's saying. That's what we read 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So he's saying, if you are truly serving me, then that service deserves reward. Yes. Wow. And the reward to your service in my house, yes, in the churches that I oversee, 
is that I will be your source of livelihood. So whether you have a job or not, he says, as long as you are serving me, I will be your source of livelihood. Now, if you have a job, thank God, he is still the one behind everything. Think about that. See how he rightly positioned Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Positioned them to be in the king's palace, to be, in, to be eating from the king's table for 70 years. Positioned them, pushed them there. Why the other Jews were scavenging these four men by their decision? To serve him. Ah, I'll never be poor in my life. I'll never, never be poor. You see, my biological father suffered for nothing. He didn't need to suffer. It was because he did not know. He did not know. Now I know better. You see why I found my way out of trouble. You see, when I first came to America, they gave me the offer to drive taxi. And I'm not angry with those who drive taxi. God bless you. But I knew this is not what I came to America to do. Someone has to drive the taxi. But certainly not me. They gave me an offer to do security. Ah, no. And these people, they are Christians too. But they don't know what we know. And because they didn't know what I know or what I knew then, they said to me I was arrogant. Mm. What they didn't know was the confidence that I have. Yes. Oh, yes. They mistook my confidence for arrogance. Yes, wow. Wow. He says, being confident of this very yes. thing. Yes. He says, it looks like I was dead in your life. Now it's time to complete what Amen. I began. Amen. I'll be your source of supply. Yes. There were people who told me, by the time I leave this church, I will see how you will make it. We're Brother, we are getting better yeah. and better yeah. and stronger. Yeah. What they didn't know uh, is that yeah. Alpha and Omega yeah. is a Zao. Yeah. Get used to that Greek word, Zao. Yeah. Christians know Zoe and they die in Zoe with poverty. With the Zoe, they say they have, they die in poverty. No, not me. I, I have both. I have both. It's true. Now, notice, this angel did not come to tell him, I have come with Zoe. The guy he was talking to, John, already had Zoe. Exactly. He said, you have Zoe, there's no Zao. Now I will be your Zao. Do you know how many Christians talk about Zoe? Do you know how many books have been written about Zoe? Yes, sir. Many don't know anything about Zao. He says, I will be your source. He said, where you serve, you should be eating from there. I'll be the reason. So, if you are sovereign, if you are ever sovereign, and you claim you are serving in God's house, you are not serving. Because if you are truly serving, he will supply. He said, I will be your source of livelihood. He said, wherever you decide you are going to serve, I will ensure you are maximize, maximally supplied. Amen. That's what he's telling. Amen. You see, you see, this is far different from the English narration. I was dead and my life, and they think it's Jesus. Yeah, which one is Jesus? I'm talking about your sustenance. Exactly. I'll be your sustenance. I mean, what are you even serving God for? Do you know how long you will live in the earth? Let's suppose now you live to be 90. You live 90 years of your life broke and busted no, 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 no. with Zoe and tongues. No, no way. He says, save and I'll be your source of supply. Yes. So he's telling you there's reward in service. Yes. And I'm not going to do it when you die. In your lifetime as you are serving. He's saying you should eat from where you are serving. That's what he meant. Zao means you should be eating from where you are serving. And I will ensure there's consistent supply. As long as you are serving. 
So if you are ushering, usher away. Someone say, ah, I mean, you people say, every time usher, 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 say, man, this is where, this is where, this is where my supply is coming from. So I say, no, is, is that your job? You are a banker. It's not banking, brother. This ushering is what is making me have that job. Without this ushering, that job will not last, though. Uh, brother, don't let my water broke dry. When I was going for an interview on Wall Street, I took the L train to Wall Street. As I was going, I met a man, Nigerian, from Benin City. He also read finance, too. He looked at me and said, from your face, you look like a Nigerian. I said, I am a Nigerian. He said, what is your name? I said, my name is Osi King. He said, Osi, that's an adult name. I said, yes. He said, we come from the same place. I said, we do. He said, I'm from Benin City. I said, well, I'm not from Benin City. He said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Aochi. Although I'm not really from Aochi, but we all say Aochi. I really come from one place, but we generally say Aochi. He said, okay. He said, well, oh, I can see you are nicely dressed. This man looked like a homeless man because he was. And it was during winter. He wore several jackets. You could tell he has not had his bath. He was smelling and then he said, where are you going to? I said, I'm going to Wall Street. He said, what for? I said, I'm going for a job interview. He said, wow, Wall Street, Wall Street. I used to work on Wall Street. I said, as what? He said, I was a finance consultant. He mentioned the name of the company, which I would not like to call. I said, you did? He said, I said I'm also a finance expert, too. He said, can I see your resume? Uh, I showed him my resume. He took my resume and was telling me, adjust this correct this. There's a place you should, when you get down, go to social place, this business center, let them quickly adjust this thing. Then anywhere you go, they will accept it. And that's how I got that offer. It was that man. But before I got to where I was going to, to come down from the train, he told me, I made it big in America. I have children in America. I don't know where they are. I made it big in America. He said, I'm a Christian. I own properties in America. But I lost everything. Then he put his hand in between his legs and brought out two paper bags from the seat, the train. He said, this is the only thing I have in 40 years since I've been in America. He said, please don't be like me. He said, I'm glad. He said, God will help you never to end up like me. I said, amen, sir. When I came down from the train, I stopped for like 10 minutes. I had an interview. I still stopped. I said, Lord, please. I came down on 14th Street, walked down. So I said, Lord, please help me. Help me. May I never be like that man. Immediately I heard the voice of the Lord like a rushing mighty wind. He said, when you do what I tell you not to do, you will never end up like that man. I said, yes, Lord. He said, just do what I tell you to do. You will never be like that man. I said, thank you, Lord. You see, that was eight years ago. He's been supplied. Now, I cannot deny the fact that I have not made mistakes, but he still supplies. You see, he still supplies. In spite of the mistakes. Because he's not looking at my mistakes. He's looking at my service. He says, where you are serving is where you should eat from. So if you are singing in the choir, and you are faithfully serving in your choir, he says, this angel is saying, I'll be your source of supply. Yes, sir. But you have some people today. They say, because I play keyboard, you pay me. They don't have that understanding. They don't know what we're talking about. That's how when they play, after service, they come, they say, Pastor, oh yeah, my pay. See, those are people. One thing, one, I recall, I recall, I recall. When I first got my visa to come to the United States of America, I was in Abuja. And, and, and. I, I fasted for five days. I did not go out. And I turned off the light. 
closed the curtain. I did not see the sun. I did not see, I did not see the sun. I did not even see the moon and the stars for five days. I just closed, and I was in one of my sister's friend's house, my younger sister's friend's house. He happens to be a banker. He will come late. He will say, ah, you didn't even go out today. He will see the kitchen is clean. You've not eaten? I said, I'm not eating. Don't worry. And I was praying one prayer. I prayed one prayer. You know what? I pray several prayers, but one of the foremost prayers, the angel of the Lord told me, because an angel came to me after I got my visa to come to America. He told me, fast for five days and start with this first prayer. And he gave me a prayer point. Would you like to know the prayer point? I prayed it for five days. He said, say as you go to America. So I said, as I go to America. Then the angel said, say I will never feed from hand to mouth. That has never happened to me. I prayed it for five days. I will never feed from hand to mouth. In America, wherever I go under, um, under heaven, wherever I go under heaven, I will never feed from hand to mouth. In school, no matter the hostel I stay, I will never, never feed from hand to mouth. No matter what the economy becomes, I will never feed from hand to mouth. Ah, you don't mean it, though. You are playing. I will never feed from hand to mouth. I will never feed from hand to mouth. I will never feed from hand to mouth. I will never, never feed from hand to mouth. For my sake, my household will never feed from my from hand to mouth. They will never feed from hand to mouth. Do you know what it means to feed from hand to mouth? I learned that a long time ago. When you eat, after a few hours, you run to the bathroom. You are empty, then you wait till when food comes again. That's what it means by to feed from hand to mouth. You eat, you are satisfied. A few hours, you run into the bathroom, you remove everything. Then you wait again. There are people who are living like, no, 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 Lord. Ah, ah. I will live a life where I will be having many options. What to choose from. What? Ah. See? That's what it means. And whatever I choose to eat will always be the best. Will always be the best. Will always be the best food. I will never feed from hand to You don't mean it. Listen. When I prayed that prayer five days, I did not see the sun. That guy, he comes late in the evening. So the sun has already gone down. He will come around 10, 11 p.m. And leave very early again, 5 a.m. For five days, I did not eat any food in that house. And I prayed. And the prayer that I was praying, the generator is there. He will tell me, on the generator, be comfortable. I did not. I will pray. Without electricity, I'll be sweating. What I just gave you now, I didn't pray like the way you are praying it. I will never feed from hand to mouth. I will pray it for hours. Pray it for hours. I will never feed from hand to mouth. No! I will never be at the mercy of anyone. I will never, never feed from hand to mouth. I'll have, ble I'll have glorious options to choose from. I will never, never feed from hand to mouth. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Take your seat, please. To feed from hand to mouth also means until you are paid, no money in your pocket. No, not me. I will never, never feed from hand to mouth. I will never, never feed from hand to mouth. That until you are paid, that's when you have money. No, not anymore. You see? That's why the Alpha and Omega said, I am your Zao. I'll be your source of supply. I will rescue you from feeding from hand to mouth. Isn't that amazing? 
imagine grown men, daddy dressed up, woke up dressed up, prepared his children, sent them to school, hurriedly dressed up. Daddy, where are you going to? We are going on a protest today. What are you protesting for? Minimum wage, $15 per hour. Daddy carried placards, $15 per hour. And the person they are crying to go and meet to approve $15 per hour is another daddy that has his own children. God forbid. God forbid. Listen, ask yourself, if your children really know what you do for a living, do you deserve to be called daddy? You didn't get what we were saying. Do you deserve to be called dead, daddy? We're not even talking about mommy. We're talking about daddy. Listen, don't fool yourself. Don't be deceived by what they tell you on the streets. That there's dignity in labor. If you are a cleaner, you are a cleaner. There's no dignity in that one. Don't fool yourself. Say, there's dignity in labor. I'm a cleaner. There's no dignity in cleaning. But it's good to clean. Yes, sir. <laughs> but don't say there's dignity in it. Even Reuben, without ever being a janitor, his birth, biological birth as the firstborn, he was referred to as the excellency of dignity by birth. Yes, by birth, without going to school. The very fact that he was born to be the firstborn of Jacob, he was referred to as the excellency of dignity without doing any job. Didn't get it. So if you think there's dignity in labor, that you are a janitor, I have done janitorial service before, so I have done it before. But I knew I won't remain there. Now, it is one thing to own the business. It's another thing to be working for someone. And you've been doing it for seven years. Brother, when are you going to improve in your life? Seven years. So I'll just do this thing for ten years so I can get a medallion. Ten years for medallion. And who is talking? Dicking in a church. Who is talking? Dickiness in a church. Who is talking? A pastor. Listen, what people used to, they, they tell me all the time. They say, I'm too arrogant. I tell you, look, brother, I'm not arrogant. I know what I'm talking about. Yes, this thing, no, yes, we must see the end of this yes, matter. Sir. This word of God, we must see the end of this matter. Daniel, listen, Daniel did not go to school. All these men did not go to school. Did not go to school. Never contested any election. Daniel became president of presidents in a foreign land that he was not a citizen of. Joseph from prison. Joseph did not go to school. I hope you know, Joseph did not go to school. You went to school. Yeah. I did. You have social security. I, I, I must be better. I did. And I was Someone said, if I have papers, everything will be fine. Okay, you finally got the papers. Is this what you still ended up doing? No, no come on, man. No. That's why I said, I will never feed from I hand to mouth. I will never be at the mercy of anyone. I will never, never be at the mercy of anyone. I honor men, but I will never be at their mercy. I will never feed from man to man. Because the angel already told us here. He said, I will be your zao. He said, it is true, I was quiet for a while. I was like someone who was dead. Things were difficult for you. He said, now it's time to supply. As you serve, as you serve, as you serve, I supply. As you said, I, I supply. <laughs> Here he's telling you there's no friendship in this matter. There's no favoritism. If you serve, you, I will supply. This one is not, oh God, remember me. This thing, he's telling you I'm not moved by tears. So you can cry all you want. Nothing will happen. He says, serve. That's why we read First Corinthians chapter 9. He says even the minister, from where they serve, they eat. You are not doing anything for me. Then you want me to supply? There are some people like that. That's what they do. You ask them, what do you do in church? Say, well, really, I don't really go to church. How do you want God to provide for you? Isn't it amazing that it is the most stupid thing to do? 
You don't go to church. You don't, in a sense, you are critical of ministers. You don't like church. Then you now want God to supply. You want God to supply for you. <laughs> How can it work now? How can God supply for you? How can God supply for you? God, you are not serving. Well, I'm serving God in my heart. Hey, let heart provide for you. Heart, heart, will, heart, will, heart will provide. Hey, heart now. Heart will supply. No, that's not how it works. Okay, now let's show you one word, one final word. Let's look at the word debt. Debt. We've talked about debt, right? He said, he said, when he says, I have the keys of debt. Right? Yes, sir. So when he says dead, necros, you see now in the context in which it was used now, now you understand what dead means now. Yes. When you, the only way you can understand what dead means in Revelation chapter 1 verses 18 is by looking at the word alive, which yes. is what? Which is that? Zao, which means what? Livelihood. Source of livelihood. Livelihood, right? Yes. So now you can understand what dead now means, yes. which means lack, yes. right? There was a lack, but now I will sub, I'll be your source of supply. Yes. Even though the word necros was used for dead, in this context, it does not necessarily mean corpse. It means what? Lack. No. Do you understand? Yes. That's why we said contextually you'll be able to understand. Yes. Because why would this angel, Alpha and Omega, say he was dead? And now he's alive forevermore. Now you understand what it meant. Yes. I'll be your source of supply. Yes. Recently, I stopped to buy Dunkin' Donuts. But there's a, this particular place I, I buy Dunkin' Donuts. They, I always come there regularly, regularly to buy Dunkin' Donuts. Tea. So they know me. They can tell. Then the guy, he, he said, excuse me. He said, I, I hope you, you don't mind me asking. One young Indian guy. I said, no problem. I said, please, what do you do for a living? And I said, why do you ask? He said, man, there's just something about you. And I see the car you drive. He said, we discuss you, actually. He said, because I give them tips. And they see me like, this guy is a young person. But please, what do you do? When I told him what, 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 what I do, he was surprised. Wow. Then he said, You are made. I said, I am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, How about you? He said, I'm trying to get there. But the reason why he's asking is because I have a Zao. Yes, yes, Alpha and Omega. Yes, so you see, when people say, You are Alpha and Omega, yeah. they sing it in song, they don't know what they are saying. Yes, do you know who Alpha and Omega is in your life? He's your source of supply. He's my source of supply. See, I bring the presence of Alpha and Omega into this job. I bring Alpha and Omega into, I bring the presence of Alpha and Omega into this marriage. He will be our source of supply. This marriage will never lack any good thing. It is not only provisions he will supply, he will supply children too. He will supply revelations. You will know things before they happen. He will supply visions. Hi. You see, Elijah played that role in the life of a, of a Shunammite woman. Where he, can, where he came to tell a Shunammite woman, come. Pack your things, run away from this city mm -hmm. for seven years because they are going to suffer for seven years. Wow. And the woman escaped famine. He said, when you return, you will still recover your lands. Ah, ah. The woman did not suffer. Honestly. Elijah, because the woman was always giving Elijah yes, food. Sir, sir. Yes. And Elijah prophesied for her to have children. children. Sorry, actually it was Elisha. Elisha prophesied for her to have children. She gave birth to his son. The son died. Elijah, Elisha, woke him up. 
right. brought him back. I mean, the guy, he became a source. Yes. Yeah, this woman had a husband. The man was just there. Oh, Useless, stupid man. But Elijah, Elisha, that she was not married to, was doing everything for her. All her desires was to the man of God himself. Blessed be God. And children were mocking him. The children didn't know who they were mocking. This was the source of their supply. And when Jericho was cursed, the water broke was cursed. Elisha knew the source of the problem. Because he became the source of livelihood. Even for the sons of the prophet and for the people. And told this woman, there's a famine coming for seven years. Leave. Go to social place. You will enjoy abundance. Aish. Elijah, when he met the widow of Zarephath, he became her source of supply. For three years of hardship, he was supplied. His presence brought supply. John now, this Alpha and Omega was sending John to the seven churches. Go through you, through these writings, and for those who have ears to hear, as they serve, I will be the source of their livelihood. So you see, no Christian should suffer. If you suffer, it is because you wanted to, or you didn't have the ears to hear. I will never suffer in my life. Never. Ah. <laughs> See what sleep is doing to you. I will never, never suffer in my life. Never. Now, when you, when you see the word death, Revelation chapter 1, verses 18, when it says, I have the keys of death, it is the word Thanatos. Thanatos. T H A N A T O S. Yes. Thanatos. Here he's talking about physical death. Where somebody dies. Pam. So you see the difference now between dead and yeah. death. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Amen now. Yes, and you see why Jesus never experienced any. He never experienced any. Because he said, what happened to Jonah? And we know Jonah did not die. That's what will happen to him. And Jesus was never in lack. Rather, he was feeding men who were in lack. So, Jesus never experienced dead or dead. Did it? That's why when people say, you are running down Jesus. It is even you that is running down Jesus. You don't know who Jesus is. When you open your mouth to say, Jesus died, that's an insult to him. You don't know. It's because you don't know Jesus. And he can allow. The Bible says, in the days of ignorance, God overlooked. But says, I don't believe Jesus visited you because the way you talk down on Jesus, Jesus, I know him more than you. With humility in the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm telling you. What you are even seeing about Jesus is not correct. And we are telling you, that thing that sounds like a good sermon, even though you cried, that Jesus died and all that, that was an insult to him. Because Jesus will tell you, me, die, when I'm the resurrection and the life, die. Are you crazy? What can kill me? <laughs> what can kill me? <clears throat> Jesus! Go with me in this journey. Jesus said, go and sit down. He says, true knowledge shall the just be delivered. Not true prayer. True knowledge. When they asked him, go, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus said, leave me alone. But we prayed. Why did the accident happen? You are crazy. Look at Alpha and Omega. He is the source of your supply. So he can supply safety. Exactly. You are calling Jesus. Yeah. And Alpha and Omega is his angel. Yeah. You are telling Jesus to go with you. When Alpha and Omega is there to keep you safe. You don't even need to say Alpha and Omega keep me safe. You say I go with the spirit of dominion. I spirit of dominion. And I declare this journey is safe. Exactly. Father we ask that you come with us. Be the driver, Holy Ghost, be the driver, be the pilot of this journey. You know some people, they pray those stupid, stupid, idiotic, wicked, stupid, puppet, miscarried prayers.
We told you how we were traveling back from Lagos to school on a father's day. I just went to visit my biological father then to wish him happy birthday. And I was traveling back to school. I was reading a book written by a, a great man of God. And we just bought gas for the car. It was an 18-seater bus. And the tire that I was sitting on busted. And the, the, the driver, he slammed the brakes. And he was on top speed on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. And the car began to somersault. Before we left the park, Ojota Park, a lady prayed, one sister. Father, you could tell, this one is a... This one is a campus SU, Scripture Union sister. Pray, Holy Ghost, go with us. We cover this, this bus with the blood of Jesus. I was just reading my book. And, and I was reading one part in the book where it says, our blood type is type D, yeah. divinity. Yeah. That was when the tire busted. And the bus began to somersault. We were, the, we were only two that survived, myself and a baby that landed next to me. And the way I landed in a swamp, it was like I landed on a mattress. Wow. And the baby landed by my side. But the lady who led the prayer, her head was battered. The driver, because the roof of the bus cut off and was cutting their throats. I still went, I still got to school that day because divinity is at work. There's so much to live for. Listen, don't let this virus deny you of what to live for. There's so much. Ah, you're offended. <laughs> Let's close since you're offended. <clears throat> There's so much to live for. Even Moses at 120 said, Lord, I just started. Exactly. At 120. You are not even 120 yet. There's so much to live for. <laughs> You're offended though. Let's close. If a man at 120 is telling God, I just started, then there's so much to live for. <clears throat> Don't die before you leave. There's so, so much in this world to live for. There's so much in this world to live for. There's so much to live for. There's so much to live for. You sound upset now. There's so much to live for. So much to live for. That's why it's my time, it's my turn. Well, not for you, but for me, it's my time. It's my turn. 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 Because there's so, so much to live for. So, so much. So, so much to live for. 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 We do not die. We are not dying now. There's so much to live for. Ah, you sound upset too. There's so much to live for. There's so much to live for. So much to live for. Yes, sir. I will always tell you, America is for sale. We are buying it off. Yes, sir. You sound upset. We are buying it off. There's so much to live for. There's so much to live for. Political dominion has been given to us. Where, where we decide who comes to power and who should be removed. Uh, we are kingmakers now. Well, maybe not for you. With Alpha and Omega behind me, we can decide who should be president and who should not. Who should be governor, who should be mayor, who should not? Who should be United Nations Secretary General or not? Or European Union President or not? Maybe not for you, but for us. 
the scepter has been given. It's part of the it's part of the the, the supply. Which means that we decide what favors us. And anything that, it, that will not favor us, we don't let it happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Maybe this was the angel who came to Joshua and said, there are many lands to conquer. Yes. Old age will never hinder me. Old age will never hinder me. Wow, 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 wow. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Now I found my way out of trouble. I'll never, never have any problems in my life. I've found my way out of trouble. I've found my way out of trouble. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever new. Change my heart.